Howdy, folks, and welcome back to uh, Ruby. <laughs> we are at, uh, after the long break, Volume 8, Chapter 8, otherwise known as Season 8, Episode 8. I believe it's entitled Dark. And um, Volume 8 so far for me has been a little, a little uneven. It got really good towards the end of the first half. Sorry. Um, but uh, it started out a little rough. <laughs> um, I don't even remember exactly where we left off. I think we left off with um, Oscar captured by Salem. Uh, our two of our crew, uh, Yang and Ren, I think, who were about to uh, volunteer to probe the whale. If you, that's like that came out kind of wrong, uh, you know what I mean. Um, and uh, they were working with Winter. And that's about Penny. Penny had uh, apparently died, uh, which makes me think that Pietro is going to bring her back one more time and die in the process, which I'm very sad about. But I think that's been telegraphed for a couple of volumes now. So anyway, let's get going. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the walls are down, so these guys can get out now if they survived. Those who are in this. Oh, Nora. Just five. Do they know if Penny's still alive, though? That's just rich. The power back on. Oh. Some seriously good advice from Klein. Ruby often tries too hard to solve everything. He's right. Face the problem in front of you. Fix it. Go on to the next one. How would we, we have a general? <sighs> Mom has made an appearance. So kind of you to join us, mother. Okay, good plan, good plan. Gonna use the automated chips to get everybody out of the crater. Um, I imagine the Grim will probably still attack, just maybe not in as big of big uh, numbers, but they're still gonna attack, right? Oh, come on, come on. Backup generators, they were talking about how that's a, it's like unfair, I think Weiss said. Backup generators, a lot of people in the real world have backup generators who aren't rich, you know, elite executives or anything like that, so. I don't quite get that, but okay. It's up to you, Ruby. And I. So the only distinction between them, I, I like um, Blake's little interaction with Ruby, which she doesn't get a lot to do. Right, she doesn't interact with Ruby a lot. Ruby's welling up with tears here. Um, so are we trying to say that the only distinction between what Blake did when she was a child, when she made um, decisions to do something, even if she didn't know what the right thing was, that she just had worse decision-making skills and made bad choices or just had bad people around her maybe maybe that's what we're trying to say and where ruby had good people around her helping her make good decisions interesting that that blake thought you know that was a bad thing to be and decided to change when she grew up whereas uh, ruby has always been that way is it just because of the people surrounding them is it because of inside because i, I don't want to think blake is a, is i don't want to think blake is an idiot i don't want to think blake is a bad person I think she's a good person. I think she's smart, just like Ruby. So what's the difference? It's got to be the people around them, right? Because she had Adam and other people in the White Fang who were, you know, prompting her on uh, to make bad choices. Ilya um, occasionally probably would have her make bad choices, as Ilya did as well. Um, I hope I'm getting her name right. It's been a long time. Um, but Ruby's always had her dad, Uncle Crow, her sister, um, you know, friends, good friends. Now in the in the in the gang here at the, when they went got to Beacon, so she's always had good people around her. Is that really the only difference? Good. If you had put Ruby in, made her a faunus and stuck her in the same situation Blake was in, would she have made the same bad choices Blake made? Interesting thought. I don't know. I mean, I have my answer, but I want you guys to think about it. I still do. <laughs> They fought that Grim before. Oh no, this is that Grim. Uh, I'm stupid. I'm, I saw the general shape, and I'm like, they they fought that before. Ruby's killed one of those before, but it's this is the intelligent one, right? Oh no. Ruby. Weaponless. Her aura either took a hit or dropped. She's uh she's out cold. She gone. Come on, Blake. Oh no, oh no, Penny's been taken over. Please come back. No! 
So, wait a minute. What caused Weiss's um, summon to break apart? Was it the Grim coming up from underground? Yes. Okay. It was hard to see in real time, but it coming up on the right and the left. Oh, okay, she just lost it there. So her aura just took a hit before, and now she it's down. Because you saw it, it kind of dissipate away, around her before it shimmered. I think, I remember Carrie or, Carrie or somebody saying that they needed to do a better job at distinguishing between aura taking a hit and activating and being, being taken down, being depleted. And that seems to be a pretty good differentiator there. The first time, it just kind of shimmered all over her body. This time it not only shimmered, but you saw it kind of spray out and kind of fracture and and like particles leaving. So that that's broken. Okay. First, I've got her. Bad time to have a broken aura. You're okay. And he's fighting it. Please. Anything you don't want to do. Come on, Nora. Is... Good job, it's Nora. It's coming inside. More alcohol, yeah. Please don't let us lose mom before she's actually been able to do anything other than just be the drunk and, and give her daughter reason to continue being a huntress. <laughs> I want her to have some kind of redemption. Uh, well, she hasn't been really bad. I mean, other than the fact that she has become a drunk and left her kids alone. Um, she can get better. I want her to get better before she dies, so please don't kill her. I can do this. I can oh, no. And towards Whitley. You are the last. I'd, although he can smell you, especially if you're afraid. Oh no, Whitley's got a choice to make here. Run! Did Mom do that? Did Mom do that summon? Because all the women can do it, according to Winter. Thank you. Yes, that's when. That's a uh, Weiss. Move. No! Oh my god, I have to pause on that. Weiss is summoning something. Let it be the knight. I mean, I, I haven't seen the knight in a while. I'll need you. Silver eyes? Silver eyes? Oh no, okay, that's not broken. That's not broken if they're using the new rules. Her, her aura just took a hit. Please. Oh yeah, her weapon was still on the ground. That's right, I thought she had lost it, but it's still there. I could hear Yes, it was a knight. It didn't... Her silver eyes didn't kill the thing. Just knocked it back. There's a guy inside there? What the... Is that how she made this Grim? She basically transformed a Faunus? Because he's got like, like canine ears or something. She just transformed a Faunus into a Grim? Am I supposed to recognize this Faunus? Because I don't recognize him. We know that Salem <clears throat> has the power to... <laughs> to uh, grimize people, right? Cause she did it to uh, Cinder. Gave her a grim arm. So apparently, she just grimized this dude. And, and I, I don't think I recognize him. I don't think we're supposed to, but I guess I'll find out in the comments. Knight played a part both times. Cool. Dusted. A person at Salem converted. You up no, to Cinder? This may be the first time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh. So Cinder just broke Watts out. Um, so I guess that explosion that came through, um, it looked like it was a Grim, didn't it? That broke through the wall at the prison. But then it must have flown off, and then Cinder came in and took Watts. So we, I mean, next episode, we're obviously going to have uh, Crow and Robin are going to be free. But I think, unless it was only Watts' wall that broke down. Um, but at least maybe we'll we'll get Crow and, and Robin into the action next week, next episode. I don't know. I'm glad uh, Mama Weiss, uh, Mama Weiss, Mama Schnee, <laughs> Mama Weiss, Mama Schnee um, got more to do. Um, 
we just saw the stereotypical drunk part of her, but then we saw her kind of snap out a bit and realize that she had to fight to protect her children. So she summoned, she absolutely summoned to protect um, Whitley. And then uh, we, with Whitley, pushed the, the statue of the knight down to actually kill the Supergram, uh, which was really cool. Um, that, that, and then we didn't get to see um, Weiss's summon knight in action, but we did see that she did summon it. Um, maybe, no, I, I, I guess she dissipated it because it wasn't needed anymore because the Supergram broke a hole in and then turned around and went the other direction. Uh, I don't think he was just intimidated by the knight. I think that he had sensed something else. Penny um, was fighting it. I loved how Nora talked her out of it. And, um, but then she succumbed and she said her objectives were to open the vault since she is now the winter maiden and then self-destruct. The only force that would have ordered her to open the vault and then probably self-destruct because otherwise she'd be a threat would be Salem's forces. But we know Watts was involved in the reprogramming, but wasn't Watts supposed to be reprogramming her to... Obey um, Ironwood, right? Hmm. So obviously he didn't do what he was told. <laughs> Surprise. And now what is Cinder, what are her plans? She wants to do something. So, she, I mean, we know what she wants to do. She wants to get the hell out of there. She, she wants to run away from Mama, Mama Salem. Uh, not going to be possible probably, but that's, that's she, she wants to either defeat her or run away. So she's a force that, Enemy of my enemy is my friend sort of situation, which we talked about, I think, last time we were watching Ruby, where there's a possibility that she might actually not necessarily redeem herself, but cause some very interesting tension um, and development story-wise and character-wise if she does oppose Salem, because then she is an ally, but she's always been the enemy. So that's going to be interesting if that happens. But she stole Watts for some purpose, probably related to that to some degree. Um, but Watts isn't going to want to turn on Salem, I don't think, unless she finds out, unless he finds out and he didn't know, he finds out that the true, her true goal is to destroy the entire world, right? And kill everybody. Then he might change. So this was mostly just, uh, the, uh, the Ruby side of the house fighting in the house, literally, uh, a bunch of Grimm attacking, which was cool. We got some good character moments, some good Blake Ruby stuff. Um, some good, uh, Mama, Schnee, Weiss stuff, uh, Whitley, Weiss stuff, uh, Penny, Nora, which I thought was just amazing. Um, I'm glad that Nora is conscious again. That's, she's my favorite character. I don't want anything to happen to her. Nobody died except the Supergram, right? Yeah. Nobody died except the Supergram, which is cool. Um, but what? power Salem has. I mean, we've known she can attach, you know, grim parts and, and grimized people, but never to that extreme where a faunus is basically just his head left, really, inside the grim. And that's how he could speak to, and that's how he had the intelligence. So it wasn't that she made a super grim out of grim stuff. She made a super grim out of grim stuff and a faunus. Man. Uh, I guess it makes sense that he had canine uh, ears and features since it was kind of a kind of a wolf-like faunus, right? Uh, almost a Beowulf sort of faunus, right? Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so again, another good episode. Um, like I said before, the beginning of Volume 8 was kind of, mm, for me, kind of iffy. But it got better towards the uh, end of the first half and it's continuing. Uh, being pretty good, pretty good action, pretty good progression. Eh, some progression. I mean, it was a lot of action. Uh, a little bit of progression this time. We didn't see any Ironwood. We didn't see Winter. We didn't see any of the Aesops. Uh, we didn't see uh, Jean and... and uh, Well, since we didn't see Winter, we didn't see Jean and Yang. Uh, was it Jean and Yang who were going to go in? Jean, Yang, and Ren who were going to go in uh, as the uh, test in the whale. So I guess that's next episode. Looking forward to that, too. That one's going to be pretty dramatic, I'm sure. Anyway, guys, 
Let me know in the comments if we were supposed to know who that <laughs> Faunus was, what I missed, and uh, what your thoughts are about where we're going with this thing. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.